with the MPAT uh, Kaiko Medical Center Tema Community 6. On your way to the SOS v uh, Village and the SOS Hostel, we'll be looking at the male reproductive system. Let's understand what it is, what it uh, consists of, and then, of course, the challenges we have with that. We don't often focus on that, according to some of my listeners. So if you have questions, concerns, 0244340437 is my WhatsApp number. We're also live on Facebook and YouTube. Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM, brought to you by Yon Vita. Dr. Sabojo, you're most welcome. You're most welcome, Doc. Thank you. Right. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know, many of our listeners think, well, we, we, we pick, we dissect women's issues, especially when it is to do with reproductive health. But we don't do the same or we don't uh, employ or harness nearly the same depth and diligence when we're talking about men. So it's great to have a urologist in the studio. Indeed, when we used to have the program on Tuesdays, it used to be the uh, theater days for most of the urologists. So you're most welcome to Ultimate Health. Thank you. Brian. Right. So male reproductive system. But before we do that, let me establish who is a urologist for may many of my listeners? Well, the urologist is somebody who deals with the pathology of uh, the genital urinary system. Okay. It consists of the kidneys, mm -hmm. the ureter, the bladder, the prostate, the testicles, the penis, and it's urethra. Right. And others. Yeah. Okay. So would we be right in considering you the the, 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 the equivalent in, in, in terms of men uh, to a gynecologist? That would not be entirely would be correct. correct. Okay. Because uh, a woman has a kidney. Okay. A woman has a ureter. Okay. A woman has a bladder. So okay. there... There are some intersections. Intersections there, yeah. Okay. All right. Listeners, uh, it's important that we, we get these things clear because many of you get these things confused. So we have a, a urologist in the studio, mm -hmm. right? But you focus primarily on male issues when it comes to these uh, organs and systems you've talked about. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Right. right. And when we talk of reproduction or the male reproductive system, uh, essentially, uh, which are the key, uh, should I say, constituents of this system? Oh, that would be the testes, the epididymis, the vas deferens, the penis. Of course, the prostate is plays a part in it because the prostate produces fructose, which allows this the semen to be able to move. You okay. See? It gives the energy to the semen. Mm. So the prostate is plays a part of it. Okay. Right. So uh, these are things that obviously uh, normally would develop according to God's own good plan and, of course, the physiology of the, the person. So uh, a child is born a male. He should have all of these uh, organs okay. as part of his reproductive system. Yes. Right. And these are things that can be verified from birth. Yes. Right. So the male child should have the testis. It should have, you mentioned the one, the one beginning with E, the epididymis. Epididymis. Yes. Right. What, what is that? It's part of the uh, testicle. Right. Testis, yeah. It lies on it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So he should have all these intact. Intact, yeah. Okay. So if I had a male child um, and there was any, uh, should I say, challenge with uh, my child's reproductive system, I probably would get to know uh, from that point. Yes. Okay. Right. So if we're dealing with a normal system, then these all these structures should be in place and should be functioning properly. Yes. Okay. You mentioned that the prostate also provides uh, some service with regard to reproduction. Yeah, it produces fructose. Okay. And it is known that the fructose gives energy for the sperm to move. Okay. All right. Uh, Doc, uh, let me ask again. Uh, we hear some terms, and most of my sending listeners, I'm sure they'll be flooding out with some of these things. You use the term or the word semen. We know sperm and we know semen. Can we distinguish the two? Yes. Mm -hmm. The sperm is within the uh, semen. The semen is a fluid together with sperm. Okay. Right, so it's a fluid that does what? It, it carries the sperm? The sperm, yeah. Okay. 
but actually it's part of the whole system. The okay. Semen and the sperm. Okay. Yeah. Right. So without the semen, the, the sperm has no transportation, so to speak. It has no transportation and it cannot also survive. It cannot survive without the semen. Yeah. Okay. Right. If you just joined us, it's 15 minutes past the hour of two on Joy 99.7 FM. The program is Ultimate Health, your ultimate guide to healthy living. This and every Sunday, 205, we come to you. Kind courtesy of Young Vita, a delicious way to grow. If you want uh, that, uh, should I say, packed infant cereal, Young Vita has got it all, and they bring you Ultimate Health. I'm just starting our discussion on male fertility or male uh, the male reproductive system with Dr. Lloyd Sogbojo of the Empath Kaiko Hospital, Tema Community 6. And uh, we're looking at the, the, the parts of the system and getting to understand them. And uh, you can send your questions and concerns to us. WhatsApp 0244-340-437. We're also live on Facebook and YouTube. So, Doc, you mentioned, of course, a key constituent part are the testes. Right. What what What... What what is the function of the testes? Well, the testes produces mainly, you know, uh, the uh, the sperms. Right. And the sperms are transported into the epididymis, and from the epididymis, you go to the vast difference through the urethra to come out. Okay. Out sexual intercourse. Right. So the testes are where the sperm are produced. Produce, yeah. Okay. Um, again, for 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 the benefit of my listeners. Um, a male child is born with testes at that early stage uh, is sperm production an active function at that age no no it's not an active no. mm. the testes also produces the uh, testosterone you see okay right yes. yeah. right so when when you're born it takes some time for the testes to to mature, to mature. Yeah. Right, and some of these processes we know take place during adolescence, where there's yeah. uh, accelerated physical and psychological development. But yeah. in this yeah. sense, the physical, yeah. right? So at maturity or puberty, uh, then the male child is capable of producing sperm and therefore impregnating uh, a, woman. a woman. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Um, I'm taking my time in and putting these together because very often uh, people confuse infertility with impotence. And uh, I'm just trying to make sure that uh, we are able to, to, to do uh, justice to some of these terms for our listeners to understand. Okay. So when the testes are fully mature, they are producing active, viable, hopefully, Sperm. sperm yeah. Right. And then you've also taught us that uh, the sperm need uh, the, the semen to be transported along the uh, organs you just mentioned yeah. to be deposited uh, in the female organ for hopeful, what, uh, union, union with yeah. the egg produced by the, the woman. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so Doc, in terms of uh, your practice... Uh, what are the kinds of challenges that uh, this system can present? Sometimes you have what you call uh, undescended testes. Okay. They don't descend to the scrotum. Mm -hmm. They end up anywhere along the uh, in the inguinal area or sometimes even the abdomen. You see. Right. When they are in such places, they are not viable and they tend to be uh, grow into malignant uh, organs, you see. Okay. So when you have a child, first of all, you have the pediatrician should look at the child and see where the the testicles are. If okay. they are not in the scrotum, we need to do what we call a orchidopexy. Right. Remove, move the testicle to the scrotum. Okay. Otherwise, it will do one thing, to atrophy, that is, you know, it will die off, mm -hmm. and such testicles are prone to form pros, um, testicular cancers. Okay. So within the first two years, this testicle should be moved into the scrotum. Right. Okay. So that suggests to my listeners again in understanding the male reproductive system that to start off with, the testes or the testicles are not in the scrotum or in the scrotal sac. No, they descend. Right from the kidneys down to the during the 
uh, embryology. Yeah. The development of the child, yeah, right. It descends into the scrotum. Okay. It's not that the scrotum has per se. Right. And at birth, it should have fully descended, descended into, into the, the scrotal, scrotal yeah. sac. Yeah. Okay. And if there's a problem with this and it's identified, you mentioned orchidopexy as an intervention that now seeks to correct this correct that, yeah. for this child. Yeah. It has to be done within the first two years. Okay. All right. Okay. We're learning this on Ultimate Health. Joy 99.7 FM brought to you by Young Vita. My guest is uh, consultant urologist Dr. Lloyd Sogbojo of the Empat Kaiko Hospital in Tema. If you have any questions and concerns, please share them with me on WhatsApp, which is 244 I have this from someone listening in Germany. It says, hello, please ask the doctor, can herpes have an effect on a man's fertility? Does prostate massage in any way help a man's fertility? I don't know whether these questions are well situated, but uh, herpes, uh, can it affect a man's fertility and massaging the prostate, I believe he means, uh, does it have any role to play? The herpes can f- can affect uh, sperm production. Can affect sperm production, okay. And massaging the, pr- the prostate, you see. Uh, if you massage, you see, um, in fact, sometimes we say if you have more sex, you see, you have the, the tendency to produce better sperms than there. So if you have more sex? Sex, yeah. In terms frequency, of frequency? frequency right. Yeah. And if you're in, in, in lieu of that, if you massage the prostate too, yeah, mm-hmm. that decongests the prostate. Okay. And that also helps for sperm movement. Okay. Right. So he may he may be onto something there. When he says, uh, does uh, prostate massage. Uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, good afternoon. The scrotum is supposed to be equal, right? I'd like to know if it's normal for one to be shorter than the other. I'm not sure whether this question is in uh, relation to the size of the testes or the scrotal sac. Is there any uh, the scrotal sac disproportional? Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. The scrotal sac is is constant, but you have one testis may be this, uh, lower than the other. One is mostly one is upper, okay, up, and the other one is lower. That is not it's abnormal. Normal. It's not. Abnormal. It is normal. It's normal. Okay. Normal, yeah. Great questions coming to us on Ultimate Health Joy ninety nine point seven FM uh, every Sunday two o five. We come in with all the relevant uh, issues with regard to healthy living. I'm speaking with Doctor Lloyd Sobojo, consultant urologist. So uh, I did suggest in my post that uh, we'll be asking and speaking of things that you normally would not uh, consider uh, Sunday afternoon discussion material, but there you have it from our discerning listeners. The questions are coming in thick and fast. Uh, Why is it that, let me just see, okay, I've got this. Please add your names, please. It helps us. Uh, Please, my semen produces a burning sensation. Uh, during intercourse with my fiance, same thing happened in my immediate past relationship. There was no problem like this before. What could be wrong with me, Doc? Is this something you've come across? Yes, I've come across it before. Mm. The fact is, normally when the semen comes out, it comes out with force. You see, okay, it comes out with force, and you normally experience some sort of heat around that area. Okay. But when it's abnormal, like he's talking about, there's mm. probably there's some sort of infection. Infection, yeah. right. Which may be to do with him. Yeah. And he needs to see... Uh, so th- is that something you take straight to yeah. a specialist or you go to the general first? No, I think better see the, uh, the specialist. The specialist. Yeah, there could be an, uh, what you call stricture somewhere else. Okay. And when the sperms are coming, trying to overcome this stricture, that cause this kind of thing. Okay. Great. Thanks for sharing all of you. This is from Dede in uh, Maryland. Why is it that the majority of men or male prostate remover prevents or perhaps harms erection? Thought the gush of blood flow to the penis causes erection. So if you have something done uh, with regard to the prostate, uh, does it cause challenges with erection? Well, it can, but it's not normal. It's, it's not normal. Yeah, it can, yeah. Okay. Because if you, you you are uh, removing the process, you could damage some, uh, what do you call it? Um, vessels? Vessels there, that could cause uh, problems with erection. Yeah. Mm. Okay. 
All right. Joy. Ultimate Health Joy 99.7 FM. I'm noting some of you uh, are typing prostrate. It's prostate. Prostate. Yeah. Prostate. Yeah. Right? Okay, we're not talking about the posture or prostating yourself. Yes, yes. Prostate gland. That's what we're talking about. Very often, uh, we need to do that. That's why we have uh, great guests, great resource persons. My son is 11, but one of his testes has still not descended into the scrotum. Is it too late to correct it? We were scheduled for sh surgery last week, but he had a cold, and the doctor asked us to wait till the cold is gone. Why the wait? This is from Na. Thanks for sharing, Na. It is actually too late. You see, the, the, the test is by this time uh, is not more viable. You see, mm. normally in some uh, jurisdictions they will remove the testes mm. because it's prone to causing cancer, becoming testicular uh, cancer. Okay. So you remove it. You know? Right. But in this case, her son is eleven. She'll still have to see uh, a specialist, yes, even yes, if it yes. results in removal. Yes. Right. Okay. Now, thanks for sharing, and uh, you're hearing this from Doc Sogbojo. So, uh, people are already flooding us with, uh, should I say, irregularities to do with the male reproductive system. And it sounds like, uh, Doc, all of these things do have an impact on fertility. Yes. Please. Right. Okay. So, we've looked at the uh, testes, and uh, the questions are coming in. Uh, let me quickly respond to this one. Hi, I usually urinate very often during the day, this time that the weather is cold, but do not urinate very often at night, at most twice a night. What could be the problem? Whoa. Frequent urination uh, during the day when it's cold, twice during the night. Is that an indication of a problem, Doc? Not necessarily. You know. Okay. If the frequency is high during the day in the cold, mm -hmm. uh, you see... When the weather is cold, you do not sweat that much. Mm. And that also means that you are not going to urinate that much. Okay. All right. Okay. Wow. You're so flooding. Like, mm -hmm. You are rather going to urinate very often. Okay. Because the, uh, you are not sweating, mm -hmm. getting rid of the, the fluid. fluid. So right. it goes through your system okay. and you urinate it. All right. Okay. So that's in response to the change in weather. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, now, who just sent us a message about her son? who is 11. You said it's a bit late when it comes to the viability of the testes. She's asking a follow-up question. Would her son be okay if you removed one testis and he has one? He'll be okay, so long as nothing happens to the other... Or the other uh, so long as the other testis is viable. viable yeah. Okay. Right. Hmm. Uh, our listeners, Doc, have pushed us further, way, 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 ahead in our discussion but i guess it's good that we're getting this kind of uh, discussion coming up so would it be normal or regular to say that males should have themselves checked frequently we hear of women visiting the gynecologist and so on and so forth and it seems to be quite uh, a normal occurrence and frequent uh, what about the men Men generally shy away from consulting the doctor. Mm. It's in somehow in their DNA or whatever it is. Mm. A man will wait until something gets worse. But it looks like we have, well, I, I'm sure they're uh, female urologists, but we have the uh, advantage of seeing a man on man, man to man, and we generally would shy away from that. That's what you're telling us. Not that they are shy of the doctor. Mm -hmm. But in terms men, of presenting with problems, health problems. Not the men are, what should I say? But apart, like you say, in dreams, you know, mm -hmm. dreams, they do not want to accept the fact that they have something. They have a problem. They have a problem. Okay. It's difficult for them to accept that fact. It is only when it is, he cannot hide it anymore. When he can't hide it. Yeah, then he or it's been discovered. Yeah. Right. Or so it's, it's our ego. It's an ego. Oof. That's the correct word. Ego. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll say it on Ultimate Health. Um, great, great, great uh, point by the doctor. So men would uh, be a bit reluctant and uh, it's ego-driven, perhaps. Ralph in Dansoman says, ejaculation normally produces semen, which comes out of the penis with high pressure. Is it a cause of concern when the semen comes out with low pressure? And also, do penal or penis enlargement creams work? <laughs> Pressure and uh, the force with which semen is uh, released during ejaculation. Is this also a cause for concern? 
Yeah, it normally comes with pressure. Right? When this pressure is not there, there has to be something along the delivery system. Okay. Maybe a, a stricture or a blockage? Stricture or even probably the process enlargement or things like that. Okay. So right. If it comes with a low pressure, then there is something wrong somewhere along the system. Mm. Okay. And that would need to be investigated. Investigated. Right. Whew, pressure comes into this, all right? Uh, I was thinking in terms of uh, likening my urologist to a plumber, a male uh, department plumber. But now uh, the vulcanizer is also coming in because there's pressure. Alex says, recently, anytime I have sex, I discharge blood instead of spams. What is wrong? Is this a common presentation, Doc? It's not a common presentation. Right. When you have something like that, there is could be something seriously wrong mm. along the delivery system. The mm. delivery system consists of the epididymis, the vas deferens, mm -hmm. and the urethra. Okay. Along this route, there could be some sort of uh, pathology. Okay. You could have cancer somewhere else mm -hmm. or pure normal infection. Okay. That could cause blood right. to flow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That could cause blood to mingle with the with the with the, uh, the semen. semen okay yeah. right in he's this noticed case, this it doesn't sound like he's done anything about it what would you advise uh, alex to, to do he has to see a urologist because mm. you have other a lot of investigations to do mm. the most important one is to do what you call cystoscopy urethrocystoscopy okay. okay we look through the penis with an instrument and we are able to visualize everything there. Mm. We know where the problem is coming from. Okay. But blood in semen is not normal. It is not normal. So see a specialist and uh, have it investigated and hopefully uh, addressed uh, medically. This is what Doc Sogbojo is telling us. This is from Nas Pintex. I have a four-year-old nephew whose testes, according to a nurse friend of mine, has still not descended into place. But according to his mom, doctors said it is normal and that there's still time for it to descend. Is that true? Because listening to Nas' message about her 11-year-old son with a similar case has gotten me worried, especially after you said it's too late from her. For him, this is from nine spin text. So four years old, and they suggest to us that doctors and nurses are saying, or doctors and his mom are saying, uh, they've been told this is normal and there's time for it to descend. No, four years is also too long. You see, it should be done. Something should be done to it in the first two years. Mm -hmm. Four year old, I will recommend that we do orchidopexy. We try and bring the testes in the scroll to where okay. it belongs. So All right. So that it will not develop properly. Okay. So this uh, procedure for the four-year-old, it's still a possibility? It's still a possibility. Okay. Yeah. Right. Whoa. Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM. I've just been uh, totally interrupted and derailed from my line of questioning for Doc, but it's all coming from our discerning listeners. Uh, and so we'll take those questions on. Della from Mamprobi, you, you sent the question about uh, burning sensation when you discharge. And uh, Doc suggested that this could be a, the indication of a possible infection and it needs to be uh, addressed medically. I'm hoping that we're taking this advice well and good and we'll actually uh, act on this. Um, I have a couple of uh, commercials from my sponsors. Let me take them and come back to Ultimate Health. Stick and stay with us. We're doing uh, uh, a discussion. We're delving deep down under with the men. And uh, there are two men in the studio, myself, Notedua, and Dr. Lloyd Sobojo, consultant urologist with the Empath Kaiko Hospital, Tema Community Stick, uh, 6. Stick and stay. <laughs> Many thanks for sticking with us, Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM. My name is Noor Tidua. I'm in the studio with Dr. Lloyd Sobojo, uh, consultant urologist. We're talking and learning about uh, the male 
reproductive system. You can send us your WhatsApp questions, concerns. We're also live on uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube. And uh, I have this from Charles. Hi, Naughty. I had a scan and I was told I have prostate. Again, you're typing prostrate. Prostate enlargement. I was given some medicine with the doctor, which the doctor said will shrink the prostate. Can the medicine affect my sexual performance, erection, and sperm production? This is from Charles. Doc. Well, I don't know what kind of medicine he was given. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, most of the drugs we use for uh, prostate enlargement, right. they cause what we call retrograde ejaculation. Okay. That is when you ejaculate, the sperms don't come out. Oh. They rather go into the bladder. Mm. And then when you urinate, they come out with it. So you are going to have re reduction in the volume or the density of the sperm you produce that come out. Okay. So um, what would he have to have this investigated? He says he's had a scan. He's been given uh, medication to deal with the enlargement, right? To address the enlargement. And he's wondering uh, sexual performance. In terms of erection, he shouldn't have a problem. Or? He shouldn't re normally have a problem. Okay, right. but you've mentioned and introduced this retrograde ejaculation. ejaculation. Yeah. Right. Which can affect fertility. Okay. Yes, it can affect fertility. It can affect fertility. Yeah. Okay, Charles, so I hope uh, you'll be heading in the direction of your doctor or your specialist to discuss the possibility and have this properly investigated. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, Doc, you've mentioned uh, retrograde ejaculation, yeah. and you mentioned that some of the sperm and the semen will go back into, into the, the bladder, bladder instead of coming out. Instead of coming out mm -hmm. and pass out when you urinate. Yeah. Okay. Can we talk of the quality and quantity? when we start talking of sperm, because I'm sure my listeners will know and have heard of the word or the term process or uh, semen analysis, right? So if you're losing some of it through the bladder, then it means what you deposit during intercourse or coitus is compromised. Am I right to yes. say that? All right. Uh, exactly. So what, Doc, is a semen analysis? Or well, semen analysis, just uh, to put it... Uh, simply is an investigation mm -hmm. of everything that's within the semen. Okay. The density of the semen, the quality of the semen, mm -hmm. the structure of the uh, talking of uh, the uh, uh, sperm. The uh, sperm. The quality of the sperm. That's right. important. Structure, the quality, structure, viability. Uh, right. Ability to move, that's very Motility. important. Motility, right. Yeah. Okay. So we're going into the semen and we're looking at its constituents and checking if everything is okay okay yeah right so my next big one almost as if i'm an electoral commissioner is to ask we hear sperm count sperm count i so i i guess this should be part of the analysis yes right exactly, yeah. Okay. And I know the men are now listening. Eh? Even though you said <laughs> they have ego problems, I'm sure by now they're drawing next to, near to, and closer to radios and uh, even pu being pulled along by women, right? But s sperm count, it suggests there should be an optimal or optimum count and that which is deficient. Can you help us with... Yes, we have what we call normal sperm. Yeah. Normal? Normal. That's the normal one. That is, You are supposed to have... Uh, sperm count greater than 20 million. 20 million? million sperms, or more than 50 million sperm per ejaculate. That's when you ejaculate. Per ejaculate? Yes. Wow. And so, so what you're saying is there's a normal range. There's a range, yeah. And you can take this from one sample. Yes. Taken from a man. Yes. Right. And therefore determine whether that is normal or adequate. Adequate, yeah. So at each ejaculate or ejaculation yeah. and i'm trying to match your professional <laughs> level and uh, make sure my my terms are proper and appropriate but during each ejaculation you're expected to deposit this number yes and so that is the normal range 20 normal. to 50 million Tw no 20 million right total total more than 20 million more than okay and per ejaculate you are mm. supposed to de deposit more than 15 million sperms. Okay. Right. So when you do this 
semen analysis and then the, the associated sperm count, you are able to determine whether the numbers are adequate enough to guarantee uh, conception. Conception, yeah. Right. Okay. So you've told us what is expected. Right. How, how, what, what is the deficient level? Or when do we say there's a problem? There's a problem when you deposit less than 20 million. Less than 20 million? Or less than 50 million per ejaculate. And then the, there are the conditions where you have what you call aspermia. Aspermia. There right. are no sperms in the semen. Okay. Then you can have what you call necrospermia. You have sperms that they are all dead. Okay. Right. So this analysis would establish all of these all of things. These things yeah. Right. Yeah. And this is an analysis which is requested by a specialist, a urologist. A urologist, yeah. And interpreted by a urologist. Yes. The reason I'm asking this, Doc, is that I know men will listen to us and be queuing at the nearest lab, thinking that they'll get a result and then they, they, they keep the, 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 the findings to themselves. So this is something which is requested for, an investigation requested for. The, the urology requested from the lab, you see. Okay. When you come to see us mm -hmm. and you, you, you describe your problems, mm -hmm. And we, we think that there's something wrong with your semen. We ask for semen analysis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they will give us these parameters. Okay. Yeah. So this is supposed to go back to your doctor? Yeah. All right. Because we get the situation where people are handling and in possession of their own lab results. Uh, this could cause some, some challenges. Oh? I don't think they can interpret, interpret it, it as, a, as much as an urologist will, you see. Okay. Because well, we don't just look at the count, you see. You have to look at the morphology. The, the morphology, the, the structure of the sperm. Yeah, the motility. So and the important. motility is the ability of the sperm to move. To move yeah. So you don't n only need to be deposited, you've got to move. To move, yeah. And you've got to be able to move, yeah. swim, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. So you are able to examine the sperm, its structure, Right, it has a head and a tail, tail yeah. and whether these things are in, uh, should I say, correct proportion correct portions, yeah. to facilitate its movement, okay. its motility. Yes. And if there's a challenge with the motility, you can have adequate numbers and still have compromised fertility. Fertility, yes. Wow. Right. So, huh. what I'll do is I'll activate the phone lines. We're learning in the steps, but uh, facilitated by Dr. Lloyd Sogbojo. And, of course, your questions are also directing us. Uh, I knew this would come in. What causes erectile dysfunction? Can some medications cause this? What about high blood pressure and diabetes? Reason being, we are always being bombarded with medical adverts on TV. This is, again, from Dede in the U.S. Doc, erectile dysfunction, high blood pressure, and diabetes. She's asking of the linkage. All of them. All of the, uh, the th things is mentioned, they can cause ele okay. erectile dysfunction. Okay, okay. Right. My phone lines are active 0302216541. Can a male be born without testes? If yes, what is the cause? Does it mean he can't have kids or children? Can it be corrected? This again is from Dede. Dede, you're on fire. It's because we're doing uh, <laughs> male reproductive health there. Eh? Can you be born without uh, testes? Yes, you can be born without testes. Mm -hmm. And the testicular aplasia, it's no more there. It's not there. Okay. When the testis is not there too, you are not going to look like a man, you see. Mm -hmm. Because of testosterone. Because you will not have the male hormone, hormone. testosterone. Yeah. Right. You will not look like a man. man Don't yeah. Go a bit more into detail. You you will have feminine features? Yes, yeah. Right. Well, in that case, you have the estrogen uh -huh. being more than the testosterone. You are going to have female features. Okay. Breasts. Mm -hmm. Right. You will you not, not have, have facial hair. Yeah, yeah, you will not have those. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that would actually affect how you look. And uh, she asked further, would it mean, is it, is it corrected? Can it be corrected? Sorry. If you are not born with it, it cannot be corrected. It can't be corrected. But you can't be helped to have children. You can be helped to have children. And I've been mentioning that we'll be having uh, uh, a series on alternative reproduction. So uh, we'll hang on with those discussions uh, for now. I've got Nana on my line from Obuasi. Nana, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. You're most welcome. Share with us quickly. All right. Uh, um, I want to ask Doc this uh, question. I have a very serious problem that needs an urgent uh, solution or something. Um, my problem is 
I I don't I don't know if I should call it masturbation or what. Okay. I've been doing it since the age of sixteen. All right. And I'm twenty five years old. Right? And I'm, I'm I'm like I'm addicted to it. I don't pull my penis. I don't pull it. But then if I touch the tip of my penis, it becomes erected. Okay. And I and I place it between my thighs, and I'll be rubbing it with my thighs. Most of the times, if I want to, that is what I do. Then I release. Okay. I've been doing it for a long time, and then now, if, if I want, to, if I want to have intercourse with a girl, sometimes it can take me like eighteen minutes, mm-hmm. and I'm not released. Okay. So you want to know if this is harming you in any way? Yeah, if it can harm me in, if it has any prospect to uh, harm or something. Okay. Right. We'll answer that for you. I have Joseph on my line. Hello, Joseph. Hello, Joseph. Hello. Yes, you're on air. Please share with us. Where are you okay. calling from? I'm calling from Chado. Chado, okay, behind yes. Trade Fair. Uh, Share with us quickly. Yes. Okay, my small boy, who is about eight years, uh, has an extremely small penis. What can be done to help him have it uh, slightly bigger? Okay. All right, I'll pass that on to Doc in the studio. Do we have another caller? No, not yet. So the first one is to do with self-stimulation, masturbation, and uh, whether this has an impact. He says he has delayed ejaculation during intimacy. He started at 16, he's 25 now. I think it's more of a psychological problem. Okay. It's more of a psychological problem. Mm -hmm. If you keep on masturbating, you get used to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't have the same feeling when you have regular intercourse. Okay. See. He has to break the cycle of masturbation and then he'll be all right. Okay. You need to be helped to break that cycle and then things will normalize. And then the gentleman from Chiado suggests that uh, his son has uh, a small male organ, a penis, and uh, he wants to know if something can be done. The son is eight years old. You see, I've had several women bringing their children complaining about small penis mm-hmm. but it's relative sometimes they bring in i tell them i see a lot of the yours is above average oh okay see, most of the women are too anxious they see penis and they compare with somebody else and say my mm. son has a small penis oh okay it's all relative right it's relative and uh your determination should should relax them relax yeah. okay right i'll come back to that in a second the size issue is a big one charles is on my line from caswa charles good afternoon yeah, good afternoon, Lottie. Yep. Yes, you're welcome. Share with us. Uh, I would like to ask a question uh, based on the topic you are discussing. Great. Shoot. Yeah, I did a surgery because according to the the doctor, they said I had varicocel. But after the surgery, it's like one of my testicles has become larger than the other. I want to know if that is normal. Okay. All right. Thanks for sharing. So after surgery... Hello? All right. After surgery, he says one of the testes is larger than the other. He had a surgery for varicocel. Normal. It shouldn't be. And I think he... The, the, the gentleman who is talking has probably misunderstood something, you see. Sometimes when you have this surgery, you have what you call hydrocell, a reactive hydrocell forming. Mm-hmm. And they interpret the hydrocell as the one testicle being larger than the other. Okay. He has to see a special to really determine okay. one has become larger than the other. Okay. Because very concerned, you don't really go to the testicles. You okay. See. All right. Okay. So you see a specialist and that's important. I have Ajiman on my line. Good afternoon, Ajiman. Good afternoon, Chief. Right. I'm glad the men are calling. Share with us. Yeah. Please, I'm following the conversation and it's very interesting. Great. We do this every Sunday, 205. Share with us. Yeah. I want to find out that uh, male reproductive organs more functional. Um, sometimes you can see that the, the, the penis is weak. It cannot perform as it should. Um, is it because of what we consume in terms of food and drinks? Or when we are aging, it happens that at a certain age, it will come to the point that it might not be stronger as it was. Okay. Right. Does food have an impact on the potency of the erection and does it uh, diminish with age? As you get older, do you get weaker in that regard, Doc? As you grow older, you get weaker because you lose the testosterone level fall down. Okay. And then diet always has an effect on your erection. Okay. 
in the world being a human body as such. Right. So that also plays a part. Okay. But these are things that must be placed under direct professional scrutiny, scrutiny to determine yeah. what is really happening. happening yeah. Right. Okay. Ooh, 0302 Ultimate Health. Uh, hi, Naughty. Good afternoon. Some of us appreciate this program very much, but a little challenge, please. We are not usually held by your guests most times to get real solutions. Aside the advice to see a doctor, most of us do already example we sometimes want to know some do's and don'ts of some health problems and we are not told by your resource persons last two weeks on fibroids topic example thanks for such an educative program well i'm sure we we, we hit on some of these things but uh I, I, your point is well taken we'll try to emphasize some of the do's and don'ts uh i have a caller on the line hello hello good afternoon good afternoon sir yeah, this is Kenneth from Ashanti Mampong. Right, share with us, Kenneth. Yeah, I, I have a similar problem with the first guy who called. The okay. self-stimulation. Okay. I mean, a long-term one. Does it have any prospective damage to your fertility? Okay. Doc answered the one. The same masturbation question. Uh, you want to hear it again. So for, he's been doing that for a long time, and he's asking if it will damage, impair, compromise your fertility. It will not impair your fertility. Only that you have to break the cy this cycle of uh, masturbation. It's becoming it's compulsive. It's becoming yeah, a habit. A habit. Right. So that you don't even have the, uh, the feeling to have sexual intercourse with a woman. Isn't mm. it? Okay. Right. Uh, great. Let me quickly take this uh, from my sponsors and come back. I have a caller on the line. Okay. Hello. Yes. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, please. Your name? I'm AC. AC, share with us very quickly, okay, if you can. Yes. Yes. My husband was also diagnosed with viral and apparently Mr. Sama just operated on him. But it's been one year since he's not, the um, motability is so low, the stem counts are also low. So how long more should we, it's exactly one year, this month, how long should we be waiting again or should we be going to take another herbal, I learned some herbal stuff like that that can sort it out. When you say take another herbal, has he already take, started taking herbal stuff? Sorry? Has he already started taking hair no, like, You said another hair Okay. Okay. Get it for straight. Like we are for straight and we'll okay. want to. All right. Okay, so uh, some frustration with orthodox medicine there uh, after our post varicose cell. In, in, uh, yes, uh, let me take this call and then quickly uh, uh, do the honors on the commercial. Hello? Hello, Noti. Yes, your name, please, sir. Good afternoon, Noti Boatin from Kenya. Noti, quickly, please. Yeah, I want to ask, doctor, mm -hmm. the stems, if you're having the cost of wife, the first one, can it become, can it make the lady present, or the second one, which one? That correct thing. My any is having. having All right. Flight. So yeah. that you're talking about going and having uh, several rounds of sex yeah. or several uh, ejaculations. You're asking yeah. whether the first one can do the job. The job. Okay. One. Great, 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 great. Uh, our lines are going uh, crazy. Uh, I'll be back in a second. Stick and stay with us on Ultimate Health. Join 99.7 FM. We got to do this. Our sponsors are Young Vita. Yum, yum, yum. And we're talking about male fertility, male reproduction, and my numbers, my WhatsApp lines are just uh, very fertile today, I should I say. Uh, many people want the doctor's number. I've Look, just Google Empat, E-M-P-A-T, uh, hyphen Kaiko Hospital, C-A-I-Q-U-O, Hospital or Medical Center, Tema. You get all the details out there on their web page uh i've got this from cool cool let me see what does it say please ask the medic the negative effects of masturbation we've talked about that uh, i know you want more detail we'll have to do a specific program on that again which we've done before i'm just trying to make sure i exhaust all right so doc 
lots of questions and uh, many want to come for a consultation. Um, they present a problem, if I can put it this way, and then they've seen or they, uh, they are in contact with a urologist. Uh, what are the typical steps you take by way of examination or investigation and things you might need them to be uh, aware of? Well, in the investigation, we do them at your clinic. Okay, right. So the men should come and then prepare for investigations yes, and uh, the investigations will tell us the tale of the tape. We look at the uh, testes, the way the man looks, mm -hmm. do a uh, semen analysis mm -hmm. and all that. And with all this, we come to a conclusion and then we recommend what to do. Okay, recommend what to do. Yeah. And of course, a urologist is the one who will do it we'll in do most it, cases. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the lady mentioned that her husband has had a varicose cell uh, intervention or surgery. And one year on, uh, he still has low motility and sperm count. They are getting worried, frustrated, thinking of doing something herbal. What would you say to her? Well, I don't know much about how what herbal medicine will do to this gentleman. Mm. One year actually is not that long, you see. It's not that that long. And of course, we have situations where we call idiopathic uh, 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 infertility. Okay. You may do the varicoselectomy, but that may not help. Idiopathic as in due to? Unknown, what's causing the Unknown, disease. right. Okay. Okay, so uh, they should but keep... Doing the, doing the varicoselectomy is a means to help. It's a, it's, right. So he's done the right thing, yeah. and the post-surgery uh, or post-intervention period needs to be monitored and managed, managed and they'll yeah. be advised accordingly. Okay, 57 minutes, three minutes to touchdown time. It's been so, so, so packed. Hi, good afternoon. Some of us, uh, okay, this is the challenge. So they want specific things they should avoid. Uh, we'll get into that with Doc, uh, perhaps if we can get him next week. Uh, Amate, I went for a semen analysis and for the volume. Uh, I have 1.5 mils to motility, 0%, active linear forward progression, greater than 50%, sluggish, less than 20%, immotile, less than 30 consistency, complete liquefaction and more. Please, can I get send the test to Doc to just explain or more lay points on it for me and other listeners. Uh, I'll contact you, but I've also given out uh, Doc's location. There are urologists also at Kolebu and other facilities. Okay, so uh, I'll contact you, right? Uh, uh, I cannot abridge the proper uh, consultation process and examinations and so on and so forth. We don't do that over radio. So we'll contact you. Hi, uh, please, my request, uh, somebody doesn't want the message to be read. He's busy, but he wants the doctor's number. I've given out the location, and you can get all the contact details on uh, the web page as well. Doc, do you, do you mind giving out your number? No, I don't mind. You don't mind? Okay. All right. So if you could share your number. 0244 0244-275-301. 0244-275-301. Uh, you know, I'm very often reluctant to do this. I'm a uh, grateful doc for sharing your contact and if you can judge by the flow on our platforms uh, virtual and uh, the live phone in uh, <laughs> prepare maybe uh, I will probably have to bridge that for you so we've we've done we've touched on some of these issues doc uh, clearly we need to go into some specific details with some of the uh, issues that impact directly on male fertility. Uh, we've run out of time, but uh, I'm wondering if it's possible to get you next week? Sure. Right. And then we can do further justice to this topic. Yes. Okay. As uh, sometimes is the case, we've used your views to light a fuse. And uh, Doc has gladly uh, agreed to... Uh, Come again next week and we'll further structure and look at specific things, okay? For those of you who state and share with us uh, willingly that you have issues, do approach the uh, requisite facilities and professionals and get these addressed, all right? A radio consultation doesn't solve everything and sometimes we're unable to use this platform and this medium to get the right information for our guests to even give you uh, conclusive responses. But I hope we've done 
uh, quite a bit today, this Sunday afternoon. Thanks again, Dr. Lloyd Sogbojo, uh, consultant urologist, uh, Empath Kaiko Hospital, Tema, for sharing your Sunday afternoon with us. And we'll look forward to seeing you on uh, next week uh, on Sunday as well. Many thanks. And many thanks to uh, Abeku Sankofi, my producer. Uh, I go over, or I give the seat over to Ignatius, who's been uh, doing country land, and he's back to do Sunday rhythms. Stick and stay on Joy 99.7 FM. Don't go anywhere. And many thanks for listening. My name is Naughty. By nature, I'm out. Joy 99.7 FM. Don't praise 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't get-